I'm Vanessa German and I am an artist. I'm in my living room right now in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I live in a neighborhood called Homewood and I am an artist who likes to paint and write poems and make things. I like to build sculptures out of all sorts of different kinds of objects. And what you see here a little bit is part of an object that we're going to be making together today. And this is an object. I'm going to show it to you. It has lots of different materials on it. This is what you would call a small mixed media sculpture. And on it you can see that there's fabric and yarn and interesting objects. This is a, a salt dish from Monticello in Virginia. This is just a spoon, a regular house spoon. Here are some keys and there are lots of beads and buttons. This is uh, part of one of my old ponytails. Some cotton, twigs, more yarn and some wire and this is all built on a cardboard cone and i call these figures power figures because i make them to hold safe a power that is um something that is something that I want to think about when I'm making the piece or something that I want to hold in a special place, like a thought, a name, or an idea that is important to me. And I'll include that in the piece. So today, you're going to be making your own power figure and you're gonna be able to make it with things that you find all around you in your house right now. So let's look at what some of those materials can be. Our power figure is built on a cardboard cone. That cardboard cone is probably only about as tall as a pencil. So maybe seven or eight inches. And if you don't have a cardboard cone, then you can make one. We're gonna make our cardboard cone today out of just, this is an old box of pasta. So get yourself an empty box. It can be a cereal box, a pasta box. Um, it can be a piece of cardboard, but it should still be soft enough to fold and to do things with. So you, this is gonna be our cardboard cone. And on our power figure, we also saw cloth. And so maybe you live with a crafter. Maybe um, you have made other things before and you have fabric that you can use or someone in your household has fabric that you can use. And if not, then use an old piece of clothing. Do you have clothes that don't fit you anymore, but they're a color you like or a pattern that you like and they're special for you? Uh, and you're allowed to cut them up and to make something out of them, uh, get some old clothes. So what I have here for the cloth portion of my power figure is an old African print shirt that I had that I have actually already cut up to use for other things. So I'm gonna be using this beautiful blue fabric and maybe some of the yellow fabric from this also. And I'll tell you how much to cut from it later, but give yourself more than one piece of fabric. And then this is one of my old studio tank tops. So you see it has stuff on it. It has, um, you know, old things from like glue from where I worked on, worked with stuff in the studio on it. So I'm gonna use this also. And I also have a piece of fancy fabric. Some fancy fancy because I love a sparkle. So get yourself some fabric that feels good to you because this is your power figure. And it should be something that you wanna think about or something that is important to you is gonna be held in the idea of this figure. So you have, so far, cardboard and some cloth for clothes for your power figure. So we also have this yarn or 
uh, sort of this kind of yarn or string. So hopefully in your house you have some string that you can use. I found this little ball of twine in my studio. So you could do something like this. And then I found <laughs> an old ball of blue yarn. We're gonna use this also. And when it comes time to cut this, I will tell you how much to cut. And you also see on here that we just have some neat stuff. We have some keys. I love using keys in my power figure because I live in Pittsburgh where August Wilson lived, the amazing Pulitzer Prize winning playwright. And he always said that keys, the key is forgiveness. And so I use keys in my work to remind myself about the power of forgiveness because this is a power figure. Um, and there's a spoon in this piece. I use a lot of spoons in my work because I think about the power of having been spoon fed when I was a child, how there was some point in my life where I wouldn't have made it if somebody didn't love me enough to spoon feed me. So the spoons hold the space for, that's my cell phone, the spoons hold the space for love. And then there's buttons on here also. There's some pieces of earth, like some twigs. So find some small objects that you can either glue or attach with yarn or wire to your power figure and collect those into your space. So some of the objects that I have are um, this old decorative butterfly. So it's actually painted feathers and I have um, a pharaoh's sort of this this object that would go into clothing so if I wanted to I could like put it in my collar and then I would bend these little prongs down and I have a teardrop a crystal drop from a chandelier I have some sage because here I have some natural elements I like using natural elements so some sage I also have um, buttons. Do you have some buttons, some old broken buttons, some old buttons from things that fell, um, maybe they came off of a shirt or something and they are in the junk drawer at your house. Get a couple of buttons if you wanna use some. I'm gonna take some out right now and whichever colors work, they work. And I'm gonna put those in my little workspace. And I'm just working on the coffee table. This is not gonna require you to use a surface it's going to get painted on this is actually really lo-fi sculpture making with objects that you can find everywhere um if you're like me you can find them everywhere because i'm an artist and i look for things everywhere so some beads also uh, a small plastic beaded uh, bracelet that somebody gave me a necklace that I probably found somewhere. I'm always finding cool stuff in the world. And a little piece of broken jewelry. And then I have a little baggie here of other jewelry pieces that I could use. And, oh, look, 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 spice spoons. Little tiny spoon, little tiny spice spoon. All right, so let us get to building our very own Power figure, power figure, power figure. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do is decide what power we want our power figures to have. And it's such a weird time in the world. It's so strange to see how quiet the street is and none of the kids are going to school. And to be perfectly honest, this is how my life normally is. Cause I work in my studio every day and I work mostly with just my two dogs around, two cats and a book on tape. I'm always listening to a book. Uh, so, but in this weird time, um, I'm thinking a lot about the power of love and the power of gratitude. Like every time, honestly, I turn on the water in my house, I'm just happy that the water comes on. So I am using this old envelope because it's a piece of scrap paper and it's gonna be hidden in your piece. And so take a piece of scrap paper and write on it what you want the power of your power figure to be. And I know that I want my power figure to have the power of love. So I'm just gonna write it really quick. It's just gonna say L-O-V-E, love. Can you see it? Love. And I'm gonna put a heart on it too. 
The Power of Love. And I am going to then, so I have that there. I'm going to set it to the side. And I'm going to take uh, my cardboard box and I'm just going to open up a side of it. And you're also going to need scissors. So scissors are going to be um, one of the only tools that you need. So you'll have scissors and then a little bit of glue, any kind of glue, white glue, wood glue, because you need such a little bit of glue that it's tiny. So a little bit of glue and your pair of scissors. And so I am going to make a cone because how many of you have eight inch cones in your house? So I'm gonna make this cone by cutting the cardboard and I'm gonna cut the end flaps off of it also because they're flaps, they're just gonna flap around. And with the flaps cut off the bottom, and I'm gonna even leave the little window here, because it's going to disappear underneath all of your fabric. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna roll it into the shape of, think of like a waffle cone that you would get at the summer carnival. I mean, really, when's the last time you were at a carnival? But you're gonna take this and I'm just gonna sort of help it to move into the shape of a cone. And think of like, yeah, that waffle cone. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be round enough on the bottom to be able to sit flat. So I took that rectangular, that rectangular box that I opened up, and I sort of made it, you can see, that it's like a waffle cone I would hold in my hand. And it's a little messy and that's okay because this is like the inside of the piece. So, oh. I have to tell you something I should have said earlier. You also need some tape, any kind of tape. And I am going to take this tape and I'm just going to tape down the open side of my cone. So you see here how it's a cone, even though it has these flappies here, we're gonna cut those off in a second. And I'm gonna just take this tape and I'm going to tape the seam of my cone. See? It's not elegant, look at it. It's the inside of a thing, it's strange shape, but it's a cone. And now I'm gonna take the edge, and if you have a wonderful adult in your house who can help you to cut this, just make sure you say thank you to them for helping you do that. And so I actually cut the flap off, and look what I have, you're not gonna believe it, it's a cone, yay! We made a cone, and let's see, it's almost exactly the size of the pencil. So it's like eight inches, seven inches, and the cone has a flat bottom. So see, it's on my hand and it stands up. That's what you want it to do. You want it to be able to stand up. Now, let's look at our inspirational power figure right here. And you can see the cone underneath here, but you also see that there's fabric over the cone. So you're going to take your fabric and decide which fabric you want to go on the cone first. The fabric that goes on the cone first is going to be at the very bottom so you won't see the most of it. So I cut off the sleeve from this old shirt and now I'm gonna cut the sleeve so that it's not round like a sleeve anymore but that it's one flat piece of fabric and it's big enough to cover my whole hand. Do you see that? So I'm actually going to cut a little bit of it off so that it doesn't hang too far over my hand when I put it on here. So I'm gonna put it over my hand like this, good. And then I'm gonna find, fold, take this piece of paper, this piece of fabric and I'm gonna fold it in half and in the half of it, I'm gonna make a small cut. No bigger than a nickel. See, it's so little. See, just a little tiny cut. See, it only make a little tiny cut. And then when I open it up, it's a bigger cut, but it's not too big, see? And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna slide it over the top of my cone. And I'm gonna look and I say, oh, I didn't cut it big enough because I can still see my cardboard and my cone. 
but you don't want to cut the hole too big at first because if you do and it goes too far down then you can't take it back so a little small cut and then you can make it bigger so I made this cut just a little bigger and I'm gonna take my cone and I'm gonna put it through almost like you're putting a shirt over the head of something and I'm gonna slide it down and I'm going to make sure that it covers it did it covered my whole cone that's beautiful so I am going to add another layer of fabric because I like drama and you can see here that there's actually a lot of layers of fabric there I like something big and poofy because big and poofy reminds me of being a ballerina which of course I never was but I like those big poofy things and I also like stripes this was my studio shirt I'm gonna cut a section out of my studio shirt and I want it to be only maybe about 10 inches by 10 inches big enough and you don't have to measure it precisely what I do is say it has to fit over the palm of an adult's hand so if you're three years old and your parent is helping you with this or someone who cares about you is helping you make this it should fit over an adult size hand so you can't see my fingers it fits over my whole hand and I am going to take uh, fold the fabric in half like I did before and with the fabric folded in half I'm gonna cut a little tiny hole just a little bit just a little bit and that also goes over the top of the comb so now I have I like stripes and prints together but this is sort of hanging down in a funny way I think I feel inspired to do a little fashion design so I'm actually gonna take this and cut some of the extra off and maybe I'm gonna cut it at this angle here and maybe I fluff it out a little bit and I think hmm, I think what I'll do is maybe cut some of that off there and cut this off here and I think I'm gonna use another piece of fabric and add some more and I'm gonna use the fabric with the yellow on it but before I put this on I'm actually gonna fold it in half and then I'm gonna fold it in half again. And I'm actually going to take it and I'm gonna cut all the corners off. So I'm gonna cut it in like a half circle there so that when I open it up, it doesn't have edges really. Does it have edges? Sort of, it doesn't have an edge there. It's sort of round here. I'm gonna round it out even more there. And when it's folded in half, I'm gonna make another cut not too big of a cut, not too big. And then that also goes over the top. So now I have these several layers, several layers. And I'm gonna cut this extra off here because it's a little too long for my power figure taste. And I am going to take a look at what we have. I'm doing a little fashion design on the bottom, just trimming it up. Yeah, I like that. I like it. So now you have the body of your power figure covered. And next thing that we're gonna do is actually make the arms. You're gonna make the arms. And so to make the arms, we're gonna use one long roll of fabric. So I'm actually gonna go back to my old shirt and I'm gonna take a piece off of it. And the piece, this piece should be longer than it is wider. So see how this is longer and the other pieces were square and they fit over your hand. So this is longer. And I am going to take my power, which is love. I know that it's reversed, but it says love here. And then I'm going to place that love word right in the length, long ways. See, it's here. Love, long ways in this long roll of fabric. And then I'm going to take it 
and I'm just gonna roll it. I'm gonna roll it all up together. So now I have what you see here is my word is sort of hidden in a roll and a scroll of fabric and there's some extra fabric on the end and there's extra fabric on this end. And I really want to make sure, see my envelope sticks out a little bit? I'm going to fold it in. I'm going to fold it in and really make sure that it's all covered up. There. All covered up. And now I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to, I'm going to use the blue because I like the blue and I'm going to just wrap this up and hopefully you have a helper there with you if this is hard for you. And I'm just going to wrap and wrap it up. Wrap, 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 wrap. Wrap it up so that the whole roll of fabric with my power word, which is one of the most powerful words that I uh, experience. You know you can experience a word, like ice cream is a word. It's a phrase, but it's also something that you experience. So uh, for me, one of the things I most like to experience is love. And that's on my word, so I wrapped this whole thing in yarn. And see, it's secure, my word isn't coming out, but I need to tie this end. So I'm just going to tie the end into a little knot so that it doesn't come untied. I tie it up and look, I have a long kind of wand, a scroll of fabric with my word inside and I'm going to set this to the side. So now I have my body of my power figure that is covered in fabric and I have my arms. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the head of our power figure. And it's just fabric with some stuffing in it. So I am going to actually use my special fabric, my little bit of gold fabric left over. And I'm gonna cut a piece that is, I'm actually gonna cut this piece in half because this needs to be about the same size that we used to fit over the palm of our hand. So I cut this piece of fabric. It fits over my hand. I'm actually going to cut a little bit off on the end so that it's more um, square than it is rectangular. There. Boop. And I am actually going to use the scraps of the fabric that I cut off earlier from the body piece and from the arm piece, just little scraps of fabric. And then from my shirt that I started cutting up and using to make art like a couple years ago because I thought it was so beautiful, I'm actually gonna cut a bigger piece and I'm gonna scrunch it up in my hand, scrunching it up in my hand, and it's about the size of a ping pong ball. And I'm going to take my special fabric and I'm going to put my special fabric bright side down. This is the brightest side down in my hand and I am going to put in the center of my palm with that fabric I'm going to put my bundle of fabric and I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to pull all the fabric down there and I just made basically the head of my power figure is basically going to look like a disco ball, which I like. And more yarn, more of this lovely blue yarn that is all tangled up. So I'm just going to open up a section of it anywhere because I can't find the end anymore. Because sometimes that's how yarn gets when it's in your studio just hanging around. So I'm going to take it and I squeeze the top because so I want that ball there and I'm going to wrap this yarn around it and then I'm going to wrap it around and I'm going to tie a knot in it and wrap it around some more so that none of that stuffing falls out and I'm going to just tie it up. Look what we have now. We have a big round 
fabric filled pretty fluff ball of, for our head. We have a long scroll for our arms. We have the body of our power figure that has our cloth on it and arms. Now let's put everything together. This is the only place you'll be using your glue. So I actually just take the lid off of the glue and push it up to the top a little bit. See, I'm squeezing it. I push it up to the top, not so that it spills out, but just enough. See, put the top of the cone, just a little bit of glue. Just a little bit of glue goes a long way. You feel free to make up your own songs while you're making art. That's one of the great things about making art. You think you're just making up a sculpture, but you also could be making up a whole song. And so I'm going to open up. Do you see how all the stuffing place is? I'm just going to open this up right here. And then I'm going to take this and this. And I'm going to meet them together like so. Put that there and there's a little bit of glue there. I gotta work on my upper, my upper desk. And put this little bit of glue there and I squish it around and I pull all the bits down to make sure that they're touching some glue. So now I have this figure with a gold disco ball head and I'm going to add my scroll arms. And so I want this to be the front of my power figure because I sort of tied the knots in the back and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna center it right here in the back. So the back has the bow the, and then I'm gonna just sort of bend it with my fingers And when it's bent to the fingers, I'm going to use some more of my blue yarn. And I'm going to, I don't need any glue for this. I'm just going to take this big knot of yarn and pull out a nice long piece of yarn. And I am going to wrap my arms onto the body of my power figure. So I just go wrapping it. I'm holding it in one place in the back with my thumb and I wrap it over, over, around the back of it, over. And I just keep wrapping it up, wrapping it until it's tight and secure and the arms aren't gonna get up and just flap away. So I'm gonna wrap over around. I like to make sure mine is really secure. So I keep wrapping and I have no more yarn and it's all wrapped and secure. Now, you might think, oh, that's a funny looking power figure. But remember, it has your power inside of it. And it can be funny looking. But let's see what we have now. We have some embellishments. We have the butterfly I showed you. I have a small necklace. I have some beads. I have uh, this old chandelier piece. I have um, a necklace that I found. So let's now embellish our power figure. This is what we have. We have this beautiful butterfly. Where should the butterfly go? What if we put the butterfly on the back? Because I have this yarn left here and so I'm actually going to take the yarn and I'm going to tie it around the butterfly because I had that yarn just left over at the back from tying that into a knot. So I'll show you, but the thing about your treasures, because this is what I call the treasure portion of making the power figure, is that depending on what treasure you have, you have to find the best way to put your treasure on there. Because what if you don't have a butterfly? What if you just have buttons? 
well, how are you going to get your buttons on there? So one of the things that I love about making sculpture is the part where I just have to problem solve. So I had some other string left that was actually on my sage. And I'm just going to wrap it around. I'm going to wrap it, wrap it, wrap it around. And attach my butterfly. So you can see it there. And I'm going to take it off that wing. See how it's like I sort of bound up the wing? I'm going to take that part out so that you just see pure butterfly. Pure butterfly. There. I still think it looks a little funny, but you know what? It's not done yet. So there I have butterfly wings at the back. And now I think I'm going to add this necklace. And I'm actually going to add the necklace in a way that will help the butterfly wings stay on. Because sometimes you just have to do what works best for the material that you have. And so I wrapped the necklace up around and then I actually wrapped it over the butterfly wings. And on the front of the figure now is the tassel from the necklace. It's a happy accident. That's what Bob Ross would say. It's a happy accident. And I'm going to just tuck the tassel in. So now you can see our butterfly wings at the back and our tassel at the front. And here are our, the, our clothes that we made for our power figure. And I'm actually going to trim some of the black and white off the front so that I can see more of that pretty blue fabric. Just doing a little fashion design. Don't call me Gucci because I'm not. I'm just having some fun. So there, you can see more of this in the front now. And I'm going to pull this gold around so that it looks there. So it's centered in the front. And let's see what else we can do. What if we put sage in the hand of our power figure. Boop -a -doo, boop boop. I just pulled out one little branch of sage. I'm actually just going to put it in to the yarn that I used to wrap. It's beautiful. And maybe I'll actually cut some of this off. There. It's beautiful. So some sage is in that side. And I have one of these other tiny spice spoons. And I'm going to put that on this side. And I just really am just putting it in to the yarn. So I have a spoon. A butterfly. And what else do I have here? Oop. What if I did like a crown? out of this old crystal. Boop-a-doop-a-doo. -a -doo. I can make a crown out of an old crystal. And to put it on, this actually still has the hook from the chandelier. So I'm actually just going to loop it in. Just find a way into the fabric. Boop-a-doop. Almost like using it like a needle. Only I'll close it up with my fingers. There. And I also have this pretty round of beads. And I think I'll put that just here. What do you think? Should it go here or should it go full out and over the back? Oh, I like that. 
So depending on what kind of objects you have, you'll actually have to figure out the best way for your objects to go on. They can go get wrapped up in yarn the way that I wrapped up the butterfly wings or if it's small enough and it will stick well with glue just use a little bit of glue I just wrapped that oh that doesn't look great but here let's take that down a little bit put that in and wrap that around so almost like a shawl Okay. Oh, it's funny. But I like a funny thing. What else can we use? Should we use this? Yes, let's add our last thing. Will be our necklace. Now, yours will look different. Mine looks very interesting using objects that I just found around the house. But the wonderful thing about making a power figure is that they mean something to you. So this might look funny, but I'll always remember that this was the shirt that I wore in my studio. I made so many sculptures and the sage has a beautiful smell and my name means butterfly and this beautiful yellow is the yellow of a dress that my mother made for me. So all of the objects mean something to you, hopefully, and inside of the arms, they're being held with love. So enjoy making your own power figure. Have a wonderful day.